Hi and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to talk about something that I am super passionate about. So my intentions with making this video aren't necessarily just to like make more people do yoga even though like yes that's kind of the goal but at the same time like the main intention of this video is to stress the importance and the awareness that we should have of our mind and our body's connection because a lot of people will talk about our physical health and like almost take it more seriously than our mental health but at the end of the day our mental health plays such a huge critical role in our physical health and in our body because yoga truly is a practice mindfulness meditation these types of practices that really bring you out of your mind and back into your body really play such a critical role in my opinion on our physical health as well as our mental health because they're so connected and i feel like it's just not really talked about in a lot of ways and then when people do talk about it people kind of talk about mental health like something you should just grit your teeth and bear through and you know oh i don't need a therapist and this that and the other but at the end of the day it's a known fact that stress can literally cause your body to suffer from physical symptoms and manifest into physical health problems in your body something that just started in your mind that people tend to kind of sh on. <laughs> I'm here to validate the importance of your mental health and how much that plays a huge role in your physical health. And also, yes, to inspire others to do yoga because I really love yoga. I've been doing yoga, so I was like either 13 or 14, and it was part of my school program, but we were able to like have a PE credit for a yoga class, and it was really interesting to me. And at first, I, I struggled in like Shavasana and like, with being still. As someone who, who thrived for so long in the hustle culture mentality, I really enjoyed the aspect of yoga being something that was a physical exercise, a physical thing you could do that that is productive and healthy, but during and after it, you're able to calm your mind almost like you took a nap. It's just so easy to get caught up in your mind and get caught up in your thoughts and your feelings about your thoughts and your beliefs about them and get stuck in your head especially when we're on screens all day it can just your head can just be stuck in this endless loop of thoughts and it's really valuable to not think and to just be and allow your thoughts to just come and go and not to grab each one and you know wrestle with them and dwell on your thoughts and dwell on your feelings and that's what mindfulness and meditation and things like yoga really do and teach you is how to live in the present, how to get out of your mind and out of those thoughts and into your body. And um, sometimes that's kind of scary and uncomfortable at the beginning because you're not used to it. And there's ways to ease into it where it's not so scary and it's not so uncomfortable and it's more of a comfortable, um, pleasing process. So this stuff just really, it changed my life, it really helped me. I've been through a lot of traumatic stuff and yoga, meditation, I'm just like, I wanna speak about it until the day I die. I want people to know that, you know, if you're suffering, I've been suffering at times too, and this helped me, maybe it'll help you. So first and foremost, I want to say, anybody can do yoga. I feel like a lot of people are like, oh, I'm not flexible. Okay, I've been stretching as long as I can remember, you know, since I was a toddler, I was in like gymnastics and little stuff like that and karate so i grew up stretching but yoga and stretching are two different things yoga is a practice of connecting your body and your mind and it's like a i'll get more into that later but anybody can do yoga um if you have disabilities there's modifications to poses you can do my point being you can modify yoga to your liking to not be as rigorous or to be more rigorous or to, you know, if you have a disability, there's a lot of modifications you can do with yoga that you can't necessarily do with other things. One of the things that really like stuck with me about yoga, if you find what feels good and you do it right and you have a good teacher and you, you aren't stuck in how it looks and you're more finding what feels good in the process for your body, it is such an amazing thing for your body to be doing all these like mobility exercises and stretches and learning about your nerves and your breath like that stuff is incredible for your health and that was one of the biggest lessons I took out of all the time that I spent working in hospitals during nursing school 
and as a nurse tech that I just like, I really value my body and I really feel like a lot of other people value their bodies and it's, we could all benefit from spending a little bit more time sitting in the gratitude we have for our bodies and you know, spending at least 10 minutes a day dedicated to our bodies, to movement and stretching and breathing and connection and the spiritual practice of yoga as well. And during my first yoga class, I feel like what really made the experience different than just stretching or like a normal like workout class was the connection um, to the breath and the truly like euphoric feeling of like going inward during an exercise. Cause I feel like a lot of exercises, there's a lot of outward exertion, but in yoga, I mean, yes, like, I'm not saying there's not exertion, especially during, you know, there's a lot of different types of yoga, but like, especially like at the end, I remember my, like, the first time Shavasana really like impacted me when I really just like kind of slipped into my mind where I was like, almost like asleep, but not asleep. I don't know, man, that stuff, that's like the secret sauce of the universe right there. Like it really just, it impacted me in such a way that I'm making a YouTube video about it years later. Um, Cause I said I've been doing yoga since I was like 13, 14. I am 23, 24 right now. About to be 24 in a little bit. Today yoga has adapted to where anybody can do yoga. Of all ages and all physical abilities, I really believe that. Like yoga can be as hard or as easy as you need it to be. And there's so many different kinds of yoga. One of the keys to seeing the major benefits to yoga is the consistency to the practice. And that's not to say you need to do an hour of yoga every day. 10 minutes of yoga every day is better than one hour of yoga twice a week. You don't need to do much. It takes, and honestly, I really look forward to the at least 10 minutes to on my mat to myself to breathe and sit with my body and my thoughts and my feelings and just let things be for a minute. It's a really beautiful process and it's something I really feel like anybody can learn to enjoy and that it's really, it's really good for you, you know? It really is like a true luxury and a true opportunity to pour love into yourself and to your body each day. I think that's really important because one thing I've learned from working in healthcare is that as we get older, especially, I know like, I don't want to come across as like, oh, people struggle, but like, because everybody knows that, but you don't understand like the struggle until you're really going through it. And so it really is beneficial to us to take a minute every day to be grateful that for the things that we don't have to struggle for, things that come easy to us, like walking across the room or going to the bathroom or you know, raising our arms above our head. And you know, some people in the hospitals, like often what you're doing is evaluating activities of daily living. Are they able to brush their teeth? Are they able to get up and go to the bathroom? And that's stuff that people take for granted. And it's, it's sad, it really is. But like, one thing I really like about yoga is that all the like, like I was saying, the mobility exercises of it, especially if you're able to like quiet your mind and get into your body and like reduce your stress over time, that can be so beneficial to your body. But I've been doing yoga off and on for a long time. I've really enjoyed my practice throughout the years. And a lot of times throughout my life, I've never really considered myself like a yogi, like someone like that does yoga. It really helped me get over a lot of grief and a lot of despair. Yeah, so recently, I kind of got in a rut with it though, because I've been doing it for so long, you know, things ebb and flow. I just wasn't really feeling too inspired to, it, my yoga sessions started to feel more like stretching and, you know, then they did that like euphoric like experience. And so I jumped into a Yoga with Adrienne challenge. Um, it's her latest 30 day challenge that I did. I believe it's her latest. It's the one she started at the beginning of 2022. It's a 30 day challenge and it really helped me get out of that little rut because it's friendly enough at the beginning for beginners or if you haven't worked out in a little while, but it's also challenging enough you know, to where, especially by the end, you really see results in your body and really more so like, just in the experience of it, the experience of having like a yoga class. Like it's just really a nice time to yourself. But one thing I need to talk about in this video is the history of yoga and where it comes from because I cannot talk about yoga and then just not mention that. So where did yoga come from? I researched this and it says that yoga is actually Sanskrit which is the root of many Indian languages. So yoga is a ancient practice focusing on breathing, flexibility, and strength. 
It's said to have originated thousands of years ago in India. Yoga is amongst the six schools of philosophy in Hinduism and is a major part of Buddhism as well. So anyway, I don't want this video to be too long. I wanted my message to be short, simple, and sweet. I kind of get into the flow and then I start to babble. Thank you for watching. If you made it this far, thank you to the bottom of my heart. It really helps me out. If you like this video, drop a like down below, comment. I love commenting back to you guys. I love having like actual conversations, comment your experiences, tell me how your day's going, comment an emoji, like whatever. I dig it, I'm down for it. Subscribe to me. I love making these types of videos where I just kind of chat. I like watching this type of content because I can like cook and clean and do stuff around my house or even like drive and just have it playing as like a podcast where I can just like listen to it. So that's kind of my goal with this type of content. And if you like it, let me know. And if you're one of the people that's been with my channel for a while, thank you so much. I love you. I will see you guys next week.